Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call the uh, meeting to order. Uh, we've got a quorum, but we also have a um, public hearing this evening, and um, we want to uh, go ahead and uh, get started with that. Um, this is a regularly scheduled and called Greer uh, City Council meeting calling and being this evening, March 12, 2019. Uh, we will call our uh, regular meeting to order following the public hearing. Uh, but do want to announce that uh, before that happens, we are going to have a public hearing. Uh, notice of the public hearing for the Greenville County Program Year 2019 Annual Action Plan the City of Greer has been announced and advertised as directed. The City of Greer participates in the Greenville County Community Development Block Grants Program and Home Investment Partnership Program funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, the Greenville County Redevelopment Authority is preparing its annual action plan for the 2019 program year. A public hearing is being held this evening at the Greer City Hall and uh, community development and housing needs and other activities eligible for funding under the CDBG and Homes program can be discussed this evening. Public comment and proposals are invited on the county strategy and for the City of Greer, including objectives and projected use of funds. Estimated $269,940 is in the CDBG fund and $111,089 is in the home fund and will become available in July. An estimated $70,000 in CDBG program income, $180,000 in home program income are also expected to become available through the program year. Comments are also invited on past and present housing and community <coughs> development performance and needs, the CDBG funds can be used to assist low and moderate income persons, prevent or eliminate slum and blight, or meet urgent community needs where there, is, where there is no other funding available. Home funds are used to increase the supply of decent, safe, sanitary, and affordable housing for lower income persons. If you wish to address uh, the CDBG funds, you can write your comments as well as provide them tonight by sending notification to Mr. John Castile, the Executive Director of the Greenville County Redevelopment Authority at 301 University Ridge, Suite 2500, Greenville, South Carolina, 29601. That period for comment is open until May 31st, 2019. We are glad to welcome Ima Nawabadu to uh, our um, council meeting this night. She will lead us in uh, this public hearing by giving us some information and then the floor will be open. Ms. Nawabadu, if you would like to come to uh, the podium, I believe you have a presentation and an overview to give us in terms of uh, the 2019 program year. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Members. City of Greer. Um, I'm, I'm Mom Wabadu, I'm the program director for GCRA. Um, we're really excited having this opportunity to present the 2019 funds back July 1. However, as I proceed, I have to give a disclaimer. We don't have the funds here, we don't know how much, but we're very hopeful, like last year. And most of you have heard me say before what the annual action plan is. Really, a proposal we sent to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development telling them what we're going to do with the entitlement once that comes to the town. For the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to really focus on community development block grant and home investment fund. However, we also get another funding, which is the Emergency Solutions Grant. That particular fund does not have a particular allocation to any municipality. Even the city of Greer, although their own entitlement funds, don't get that particular funds, but are able to use that too. And that fund is really helps us to address um, homelessness needs. We're able to provide funding to homeless providers. We're able to, since 2011, provide permanent housing to families at risk of homelessness or literally homeless. We're able to give them short-term rental assistance, pay the power they pass, utility bills and things like that to help them become or have their own permanent housing. But for this particular one, uh, we're talking about CDBG funds that come to the city of Gray and home funds. This year, 2019 starts July 1 and ends um, June next year, 2020. 
And this particular funding year actually is the fifth and final year of our current comp plan. And the comp plan will start next year. When we come back next year, we'll actually be doing different meetings in the different community areas, trying to get all kinds of needs assessments to plan for the next five years. So now this ends the five years that we have with HUD. It's a part of the requirements for the name. For the city of Greer, we're actually using last year's funding allocation for projects. If we get more, we'll adjust all the calculations. But before I go into the specific funding allocation, I'm going to talk about what you can do with CDBG funds and why you use CDBG funds. CDBG basically, as the mayor explained, the main thing, the main objective is helps to address low and moderate income family. It also helps to address slum and blight and urgent need. We don't have to worry about that because we don't have a disaster to be concerned about. So most of the things we're doing about is addressing home, low and moderate income families. CDBG funds can be used to address the entire need of the neighborhood. I'm going to talk about sidewalk, curb, things like that. That particular neighborhood has to be low or moderate income with the qualifying census tract. You've got to need more, you've got sunny side. However, even if you think the neighborhood is not, or you know it's not a low mod area, but you feel that the residents in that area probably will be low mod, we'll do an income survey. Once we have 51% of the direct residents that would benefit from this, we can do that sidewalk or street improvement. Right now, we actually have a project going on in the Edmond community. We've used lots of city beach money to help address the master plan needs. So the Spring Street project going on there is we're using city beach funds. This is a partnership we're getting money from the county transportation, so they pay 50% of that. And your city beach funding is helping to pay the rest of it. This is going to be a road, a, a curb, um, curb and gutter. They're actually in the last phase of the project right now. They're just waiting for real consistent sunshine so they can do the top coat and complete, uh, I think, 140 feet of um, curb and gutter to finish up that project. We use it in the past to do the Morton Street and all that. So that's something that's been going on, and we've done some demos in the past as well. We use it to do the infrastructure and the quick site community, the roads, the detention pond, and all that that we set aside over there. CDBG money can be used for housing activities like repair program, not new construction. However, some things you could use towards building that house, like if it's a demo or things like that, CDBG money can be used, but the actual high cost of the housing construction, no. It has to be a specific strategic area like we have in the Bruton Town community. So that's an area that HUD will have a special designation for you to be able to use CDBG money to do new construction. We have three particular tiered programs for the repair program. We've got one that's $5,000, which you can use for seniors or families living with disability to do a repair of about $5,000. And that's a straight grant. Then we have another layer that's about $10,000. It's also a grant, but we call it forgivable loan. And over five years, it gets forgiven. Seniors or families living with disability, we can do things that a little bit more than the 5,000 roof repairs and things like that. Then we've got another layer that's $25,000. That's for anybody as long as you're low and moderate income family. This particular program, it's a loan. It's, um, it's basically cheered towards your income based on if you're 30% or 50% or 80%, we have 1% interest rate, we've got 3% interest rate, and we've got 5% interest rate. We've gotten people that use it, use the max, and their monthly payments is a little over $100, I mean $100 a month. So we're not a bank. We're trying to make sure for this particular program to preserve existing house and stuff, be able to encourage people to age in place. Um, so that's why we have the $5,000 to be able to do your bathrooms, do um, some handicap rooms and things like that. And also the $25,000 helps to improve your existing house and stuff. So that way, you know, um, 
we, you don't leave the house to really get so bad that it needs demolition. And you can also use, the, um, we've used the city budget money, and we do have programs as well for the facade and economic development. The facade program has, for City of Grey, has been very successful. I must say the resource, that, the additional resource that you provide to businesses have been so welcoming and so wonderful. This particular program year, which started July 1, we've actually closed on three businesses. We have four that have signed contracts, and we've got other two that are uh, trying to get their application complete. So with the $5,000, the $10,000 the city gives really helps to improve the facade. And you can see, I'll show you some pictures as we go along. It really makes a lot of difference for businesses trying to improve or start up or existing. The only thing that has been a little bit of um, a delay is because your downtown have um, historic designation, so we go to a SHIPO, um, State Historic Preservation Office Review, but they've been wonderful. They've been able to work with us to be able to address some of the needs as well. So addressing some light materials and things like that has not been so bad. They've really worked well with us. And um, you could do facility improvement. If the facility improvement is specifically for seniors, you could do a lot. You could pretty much do any kind of repairs you have there. If the facility is for everybody and is not in a low mod area, we can only do ADA items with the CDBG funds. So things like that. Now we talk about home money. Home is basically home makes accessibility, availability, affordability. New construction, rehab, homeownership, rentals. We've used this program so many times to do houses in Nadmore. And if you've had time to go to a Creekside community, that's what we've been using. Creekside, the only thing with Creekside is the income guideline for that would be the Scarborough County, Nebo is Greenville County. And we've used the home funds, gut fund projects for other partners as well. So our funding is, that's a gap. So that way you're able to get your funds, the equity you have, or bank funds, and then the home funds help to write out, provide subsidy. As long as the homeowner or the renter is going to be lower moderate income. So, in going through that, I can talk a little bit about how much money we are projecting coming into the county, coming into the city. One thing I have to mention is your home fund is almost, almost twice your grant fund. That's wonderful because we're doing a lot of home ownership units, we're selling, we're renting, and the money comes back to you. That becomes your program income. The um, CDBG rental, most of them have been either families or households have used it to rehab and get paid back, so it comes back to the city as program income. So your home money is almost, you know, just as, almost twice. Uh, these are projections, usually by the time we end, we'll probably get more than $180,000 in home program income. So in looking at that, we're anticipating that the, the city will have approximately $630,000, $729. And the allocations are we have the, all the home funds we use towards new construction any housing and we've got I'll talk about two uh, housing partners that did apply for home funding to get funding their project and of course we have a facade we want to increase that so twenty thousand dollars would give opportunity for four other uh, businesses to use this year as well infrastructure projects that we have the facility improvement that you talked about with the city administrator and um, sub recipient this particular year, we increased the sub-recipient funding. The past has been about $41,000. You get more than twice, two and a half of what we've requested over the past couple of years. So this year, um, varying the criteria for how, how you designate your public funding, public service funding, we were comfortable increasing it up to $60,000. So we talk about the sub-recipients proposals that we've received. Staff and uh, I've been coming to have looked through it, um, made recommendations to the city as well. So. This is just the pie chart of the same thing. So as you can see, of course, uh, new construction is 
pretty much almost 50 percent of the total allocation of what we're planning to do. And those houses are going to be families aiming 80 percent and below. Some recipients are really pleased, 10 percent of that, and then facility improvements about 21 percent. And um, one thing we have to understand is as we have facility improvement and infrastructure, we can always transfer funds according to what projects we have existing that year because they are like CDBG funding. So that's something I can understand that can be done as well. Here I'll talk about the service parent funding recommendations. Can't see very well. Um, the Gray Parks and Recs for the summer program um, did request about $25,000. And in looking at the proposal, all the supplies and activities were funded. The only thing that wasn't funded is the counselor. Because those are funds that are also in this um, city budget, so we can't interchange uh, funding that was in the city budget to pay for with the CDBG fund. Less is an expanded use and expanded um, but, or an, a difference or another staff, so that's why that's there. The Greg Parks and Rec, the computer classes for seniors are fully funded, and then the Greer advanced, uh, Creative Advancements, which is an after-school program, we funded almost half of what they requested. I mean, we recommended that. Great Community Ministries gave $15,000 of their total $20,000. So they provide um, meals to seniors as well. Um, great Relief and Resources, we recommended fully all that they requested. Um, helping Hands, the only thing that wasn't from the day was um, they asked for two laptops, so we have everything less one laptop. We recommended one of the laptops and all the other things that they requested. Communities and school, this is new for City of Greer, but not new to the county. They do excellent job. They've done a lot of um, some um, schools in Greenville area. They really help to address scholastic achievements. They are able to provide support networks between families and children. And they've been looking at all their progress and what they've been doing is such a great need and such a great, um, they're able to use their resources very well. So that we fully funded their request. Grand Community Outreach requested for funding for 12 computers. We um, did fund that, pro uh, that program. Then talking about the home funding, we got two proposals from uh, housing <coughs> partners, the Nehemiah and Grand Community Outreach. Now, Maya actually currently has a project in the Neymar community. The range with subdivision have six lots. So the prior approval made an adjustment to their request. They asked for you previously approved $80,000, but with the cost of construction and everything, so they asked for that $80,000 to be used to us just one of the units, so which uh, our board recommended approving that to make sure that the houses are going to be definitely families with 80% and below and having an affordability of 10 years for that home buyer. So for this particular, they want to build a second house, requested for $80,000, so we approved 40. It's going to be $20,000 of it will be grant funded, so good direct subsidy to the home buyer. And then the $20,000 will be a repayable loan at 1% over 20 years. Um, up on sale of the units. These are all home ownership units. Great community outreach proposing one rental unit on the sunny side. It's going to be new for us. In the past, we've done um, construction management for them, but they've walked up and given a very good development team to help them do the project. So that helps the capacity and our comfort level to be able to give them the funding to do this one house. The total development cost is $140,000. The actual 104, we gave 80. That way we know, looking at working to the performer, that they could get additional funding. If it's not right, they can actually have other loans from a bank to be able to cash flow that project. Um, so we approved, recommended approval for of $120,000 of your home funds towards that project. Um, towards the two projects. 
This is Nebo Community. Um, Street as a joint project, county transportation will be paid half of it and city BG money will be paid half of it. So instead of us having to use the city BG funds of 1.15 million to 1.15, so that's, um, that was a really great savings to help us for the past city BG money for all the same years to get that. This is a good side community. Well, we did this, um, basically, in the only summer. Comments? <coughs> on the need more um, project that they did on the um, when they did tree mine in, in canteen I mean yeah. and they did the uh, curb and so that that work was um, was excellent but the spring Street project it's not no I mean e even though it's it's not complete but if you compare the work that was done on canteen to the work that is being done on on the Spring Street, and it, it's it's not up to par. And go ahead. No, because no, I was going to say, see, there's a, a couple of things that they did. First off, the contractor back there was very had a very bad attitude. Just, I mean, when people tried to come out and talk to him and explain what was going on, for instance, on my father's um, yard where they had to um, tie it into the to the road. They came out and they tore that apart and left it just like it is. And now you've created another problem because as much rain as we have, it's starting to, to wash his yard away. You know, and I understand about the, the weather that they might not have, have had time, but they could at least field it in with something until they got back out there to pay. And that's one of the things we're going to have to stay on about to get them to make sure that they complete the work that they did as, as far as that goes. And, and if, if you got time sometime, I'd like to go with you and show you what I'm talking about, how people compared what they did on Tremont and Canteen to what's being done on um, Spring Street. And there's a lot of questions, you know, on why, why the workmanship isn't of the same quality. Okay. Um, the contractors uh, actually, we have very good confidence for the engineers working. So that is something that um, their C2C are something we can address with them and they will make sure everything is part before that project is closed down. 
other? Well, did, you, you, you'd mentioned this project, which has certainly been a, a great project and, and, and taken place over the last four, four, five, six years. And then the work we had done in the, um, the Victor Mill and the Sunnyside area even before that. If we suspect there is another area in the city that may qualify as, as Little Mod that we wanted to look at a future project, how do we define that and then verify whether or not that it is? And I'm thinking of just right off the top of my head of the Greer Mill area. We've been basically down the boundary where we take a look at that. She said to start. If it doesn't qualify that, we then move to Recon Celery. And we've got to So, so in that same vein, I, I, you know, this, as I just mentioned, this project's you know five or six years old at this point. I know the the Sunnyside project um, was was probably as long. The Victor Mill project maybe a little shorter. Um, when we do a project like this, do we go in on the front end with the planning to stretch it out over five or six years so that we can continue to do other things as well? Because I know that we've been doing other projects on an individual basis other places in the city. So is it, it's not either or, is it? It's not, it's not resources, but it's um, So um, it's some place priorities on that as we do, so that we're not just doing more, but we've got a big side as well. So we're able to shift resources just to areas so we can you know, continue to do that. But another thing, again, is sometimes the priority of the project is they're going to go through some approval that will take a couple of, you know, months and years. That may be too late the actual events, so about who we do something else going on. So it's something we're always trying to have. It's not even, like I said, not. Mayor, one of the strategies that we have to consider is that we certainly have the ability to do more individual properties, and we could do those all over. But we're able to leverage when we do neighborhoods. We're able to leverage that that match from the county transportation committee that we otherwise would not be able to receive, and that that's a huge incentive for us to get those dollars in because we can do twice as much work. Good. Council, any other questions or comments? I have one more question about Creekside. You have Phase 1B there. Is that uh, UHC? Is that yes. United Healthcare? United Healthcare um, Corporation. It used to be Austin Public Corporation. They just senior house and using our section 202 for funding. So that's one of my last questions. So they complete those senior houses and then just hold them in their inventory? Yes. And they're just rented or? They're rented. And they're holding Okay. Others? This is a public hearing. I'll open the floor up and ask if there are any questions or comments from the from the public at this point. I'll ask a second time, is there any uh, comments or questions at this point from the public in regards to the 2019 programming uh, fund, uh, programming action plan uh, for the CDBG program and home fund investments by the city of Greer? Seeing that, I'll ask a third and final time. Are there any questions, comments, or uh, other remarks in regards to the 2019 uh, annual action plan by the City of Greer? 
Having asked a third and final time, I will call the um, public hearing to a close. With that, then, we will move to our regular meeting. As I stated earlier, this is a regularly scheduled Greer City Council meeting called and convened this evening, March the 12th, 2019. Having called the meeting to order, we will uh, proceed. I do know that we have a, a number of uh, folks from our uh, leadership uh, Greer class with us this evening. Uh, I am uh, going to uh, give them a small test. Uh, we have a public forum coming up after our Pledge of Allegiance and our invocation, and so y'all have got whatever length of time it takes us to do the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation to elect somebody to speak on your behalf when we uh, finish those two items and tell us a little bit about what you've been doing, okay? So with that, Ms. Uh, Judy Albert, our councilwoman, will lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance followed by the invocation and then in public forum we will ask if there are any comments and if not we're going to have leadership rear bring us an overview i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all in joining the prayer for the council Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you bestow upon us each day. We pray that you will be with us during this meeting, that you will be with us as elected officials to listen and perceive and follow in the direction that you would have us go. We ask your blessings upon each and every one here and that you will be with us this night. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <coughs> So I didn't hear a whole lot of chatter back there, so uh, I guess uh, y'all have a spokesman ready. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> if you would, uh, tell us uh, who you are, maybe who some of the people that have joined you this evening. We'll have them stand. Rather than you have to name all of them, would y'all stand if you're leadership rear class of? 39. 39. <laughs> Yes, the best class. Yes, well, okay. Uh, thank you all for joining us this evening. Would uh, you give us a little uh, overview of uh, how this year has gone? And I know you've had a very successful project, and um, so how about an update? We have. It's been great. My name is Jeff Howard. I'm the uh, elected class president this year, which is why there wasn't a lot of chatter. <laughs> that I needed to come speak. But um, for those of you that don't know much about leadership career, uh, every year there's a class about 30 people, and uh, you got some of the, the finest, uh, young, old, uh, but uh, some of the future leaders, hopefully, and current leaders of career uh, in attendance and put a portion in our class as well. Um, one of the things I mentioned, we have our ongoing class project right now that we're working on and we're partnering with uh, Chandler Creek Elementary School, which is one of the elementary schools here in, uh, in Greer. And that's one of the largest elementary schools in the Greenville County School District. And what we're doing is we're partnering with them to do a uh, century pass on their existing playground. The century pass, uh, if you don't know much about them, are uh, geared towards children with uh, anxiety, ADHD, um, autism spectrum, and things like trauma. Uh, so what we've done is uh, we've partnered with a company that's going to supply the, the paint and the stencils and we'll re recoat, reseal their, uh, their existing playgrounds, their blacktop area, and we're going to put 10 different stencils down that will not only be for those children that have sensory processing disorders, but also for the entire uh, school. And then after hours, that playground is available to the community. So, uh, your children will be able to uh, access that as well. So, in addition to that, there's a little bit of an open area in their playground. We're going to extend the fencing to make it a little more secure. Um, and, uh, and some other things. Oh, we're going to actually supply their uh, their sensory. They have a sensory room, which are for those same children. They have a bad day, a little fidgety, just kind of having a tough time. There are a lot of tools that are out there that they don't have. They've got teachers that are. Uh, able to handle that, but they don't have the tools. We're going to supply as much as we can. So we're in our fundraising time right now. Uh, we've got about another month before we're going to do the project. We're going to do it during the week of uh, spring break. So that's our project. And uh, if anyone's interested in knowing more about it, anyone that stood up or myself, I'll be glad to address that. Thank you, sir. Any questions? We appreciate it. Thank you all for all that you've been doing. Yes, sir. Mayor, I could have just one thing. Yes. Said, uh, what we're going to do 
do is we want we want really good. That's the reason we chose one school, and then um, hopefully the community schools will see what we've done, and they can they can kind of build off of that, and we can grow the community with all the elementary schools, middle schools, high schools that have children, so these type of things. Um, hopefully we can grow this with something there in this channel for each elementary. We chose one school and said, hey, let's do it really well. I appreciate it. Thank you. Great project, and um, I know it'll be a, a real benefit to those children. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, open to the public on the weekends as well, or uh, be something that our community could benefit from for sure. Thank y'all for joining us this evening. Ms. Duncan, anyone to appear in public forum this evening? No. Sir. With that, then, we'll move to the minutes of our council meeting from February 26, 2019. I'll entertain a motion that they be received. So moved. Second. Have a motion in the second floor is uh, open for uh, anything, items of note. Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Aaronwood. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mr. Dumas. Yes. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Ms. Albert. Yes. Mayor Danner. Yes. Council, this is hemophilia um, month, this month, and um, I want to um, recognize that with a proclamation, and I believe Sue Martin is with us this evening. And uh, so if Sue and uh, anyone else from that organization or others that would like to uh, join me in front, we are going to uh, present you with a uh, pr uh, proclamation. description of the uh, CDGD money is, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll give it a go, how about that, all right. Uh, this proclamation reads that whereas this designation will formalize and extend a bond designation 30 years ago of March 1986 as hemophilia awareness month by President Ronald Reagan, whereas the Federal Department of Health and Human Services designated March 2016 as National Bleeding Disorders Month. These bleeding disorders will share the inability. Those with bleeding disorders will share the inability to properly form blood clot and are characterized by extended bleeding after injury, surgery, trauma, administration, and lead to significant uh, fatality and can be fatal if not treated effectively. Whereas many individuals with hemophilia become infected with HIV and hepatitis C in the eighties due to contamination of blood supply and blood products. Whereas this awareness month in South Carolina will generate greater awareness and understanding not only of hemophilia but also inheritable bleeding disorders, including the development of whiplash disease, which alone impacts an estimated 1% of the U.S. population with 3.2 million individuals. Uh, this month will foster a greater sense of community and shared purpose among individuals with bleeding disorders, whereas this awareness month will elevate awareness engagement in the inheritable bleeding disorder journey beyond our community to the general public, enabling the prevention of illness, unnecessary procedures, and disability. We, the Council of uh, City of Greer, declare this month, March 2019, as Bleeding Disorders Awareness Month in the City of Greer. And so I would like to present this to, uh, to y'all, and if uh, someone would like to make a comment in that regard, you want to do well, thank you. We just want to take uh, this moment to thank the City of Greer and thank you, Mayor Kander, Danner, for um, this opportunity to raise awareness for those affected in Greer and in Greenville County and actually in the whole entire state that are affected by bleeding disorders. When you get a uh, diagnosis of hemophilia, abnormal crimes, or a life-threatening disease, it's um, important to have community support and to have um, families that you know help you out so we appreciate you taking the time to allow us to raise some awareness so that we can raise more education on these disorders so thank you so much for taking the time out today thank you i appreciate it and this is a little time do you know about the red tie this is a uh, symbol of our organization and it is a 
is the time that online, the free learning people in the United States that are affected by the disorder. So we, uh, in Minnesota, South Carolina, who are trying to reject the threat of these my children, are affected by the employee of my son. Um, we have this tie for you that may be perhaps you can wear during the month of March. So thank you so much. Well, it is. Okay. Well, we also want to celebrate Black History Month this month as well, too. It's the goal of the city of Greer. Um, to have uh, to celebrate Black History Month. We do this with an essay contest to highlight the contributions that African American men and women have made in the history of the United States. Students were asked to write an essay that celebrates and honors their African American heroes. This was uh, open to high school students and we had over 100 participants, 105 participants. And I'm going to ask Lindsay Schaefer and Emma Hag if they would to join me this evening. Lindsay and Emma are event coordinators with the city of Greer, and uh, they have got certificates and a gift certificate for our three top place winners. In third place this year, Sarah Lovegrove from Riverside High School wrote an essay about Melissa Ford. Sarah, congratulations. Join us here in the front, and if you'll just come and stand right over here, stay with us. We're going to, we're going to, whoops, and there we go. We are going to recognize now our second place uh, winner, Louis uh, L. Zongo from Riverside High School. He wrote an essay about John Baxter Taylor, Jr. Congratulations. Thank you. And our first place winner is Elsie Vanzel from Riverside High School, who wrote an essay about May Jemison. Please join me in giving these folks a round of applause. With that, we will, uh, we will move to the administrator's report. Mr. Triggers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of Council, um, you'll be glad to know that after last week's uh, planning session that we spent together, after two days and 18 hours of us uh, sharing information, and my, my report this evening is rather brief. <laughs> um, but we did have a good uh, opportunity to spend time together last week, reviewed uh, many of the uh, uh, planning items, uh, priority items that we have moving forward. Uh, you will see those uh, items again as we work through our budget process and uh, update our strategic plan here in the city. So again, thank you very, very much for your time last week. It was a significant contribution uh, that you made to that process, and I thank you very, very much for doing that. Um, the mayor and I also had an opportunity last night to spend some time over at Spartanburg County. Spartanburg County Council uh, held a workshop last evening. Uh, uh, specifically looking at the reassessment process that they conducted in 2018. Uh, that reassessment is affecting property owners in this uh, cycle as, uh, as property taxes were due uh, in 2019 for the 2018 year. Um, it was a very good, good presentation, information from their uh, tax assessor, uh, from their auditor, from their county treasurer, and their county tax collector, as well as their county administrator, uh, giving an overview of how that process works uh, and the impact that municipalities and other taxing districts have uh, to that process. Uh, you may not be aware that Spartanburg County has 88 taxing districts uh, within Spartanburg County. Uh, that includes obviously the school districts, the municipalities, uh, water districts, uh, special purpose fire districts, uh, and sub districts. 
Uh, so there are 88 taxing districts within Spartanburg County. Uh, very educational. Glad we had an opportunity to go by and participate in that. And just as a matter of information, we want to make sure that you do have on your calendars for April the 12th. Uh, we'll be uh, holding our annual employee family picnic. That is on a Friday afternoon, a Friday evening after work. Uh, that Friday, April 12th, we'll begin here uh, at City Hall at 6 p.m. on that date. We'll make sure some additional information is coming forward to you. If you've not yet had an opportunity to respond or to let us know about your uh, your desire or your uh, sizes for T-shirts, we just want to make sure we have that uh, as we share that with all of our, our team members with Team Greer. Uh, and last but not least, uh, maybe our final reminder, but March 30th is the final date without penalty uh, for you to submit your state ethics reports. Uh, so please uh, make sure that those are being submitted uh, and you get those completed online no later than March 30th uh, because after that, uh, I can assure you, they do begin assessing penalties and we would like to, uh, to avoid that if at all possible. That's the information I want to share this evening, certainly available to answer any questions you may have uh, relative to last week uh, or uh, tonight as we work through this council agenda as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll move to um, items of old business this evening, uh, of which we only have one. Um, this comes as the second and final reading of Ordinance Number 8-2019. It's an ordinance to change the zoning classification of property owned by TNH Development LLC, located at 103 Lakeview Drive, from R12 Residential Single Family to C2 Commercial. Mr. Brandon McMahon joins us this evening. Mr. McMahon, any new or additional information in regards to Ordinance Number 8-2019? Uh, no, sir. There is no new additional information at this time. Upon the recommendation of staff that there is no new or, or additional information, I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. The floor is open for discussion. No, no discussion regarding the, the um, rezoning. I'd like to ask staff to go back and look at the charge that they made to the property owner for the rezoning uh, based on the information you told me it was, or told the council that it was kind of cleaning up of some, I guess, maybe an era over the years. And if, if staff so thinks that it would be appropriate, I think a refund of that charge would be proper. The applicant is actually talking how they actually owned the property back in 1993 when it was requested to be rezoned to R12. Um, that is, if that is council's desire, we can do that. Staff does not have the authority to issue a refund since council sets the fees. Okay, Did make sure it's not clear as mud for me. Okay. Uh, when the, the owner, Tuck and Howell. Tuck and Howell owned this property back in 1993 when it was annexed and zoned to R12. Okay, and who asked for the zone? Tuck and Howell. Okay, all right. And so. Did this tuck and out still on them? Are they still the owners? They are still on yes, sir. Okay, I see. Okay, then just disregard that then because I <coughs> thought that, that was something that during the annexation process that... And that's where I think last meeting I couldn't, I can't speak to how that was handled. They had, I believe it was 22 properties on that one ordinance, so it could have been oh. miscommunication. Okay. Others? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Dennis? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Banner? Yes. Council will move to items of new business, the first of which is the first and final reading of a resolution, which is number 6 2019. Mr. Reno Deaton, uh, the Greer Development Corp., joins us for consideration of a proposed road to closure. Mr. Deaton, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, Council, good evening. I know that this uh, resolution comes to you with no surprise. Uh, we've had a number of discussions uh, about anticipating this request to close a portion of Victor Avenue between uh, Highway 80 and McElrath. This resolution uh, places that uh, for public hearing and, and on your agenda for future consideration. For the purpose of discussion, I'll entertain a motion to receive. Uh, second. A motion and second. Floor is open for discussion. What becomes of this roadbed if we close it? 
Uh, the city abandoned, is my understanding, of, of that portion of the roadway that's no longer occupied. Uh, however, through the process, uh, I believe, and again, I'll have to get verification from uh, the city's attorney on this, but I believe that the, the utilities maintain their right of way through that property. Uh, uh, on so, the, is it the same landowner on both sides of the road? Yes. Sir. So, they're going to absorb this piece of property? Yes. Sir. With no compensation to us? I'm not aware that compensation has been discussed at this point, other than the uh, two large manufacturing projects that we're looking at. <laughs> I don't consider that compensation. That is compensation. I didn't know. So, you were right up that way. Others, right now, with this, this resolution, this just sets up a public hearing and then a formal ordinance. Is that? What's my understanding is that, and the city attorney's been uh, managing this process on behalf of the city, that this is the next step in the process to get this, uh, so he's uh, notified the utilities, giving them an opportunity to, to respond to the request. This then moves it to public hearing. Uh, they'll, post, they'll post the property uh, for the public to review. They'll have the opportunity to come in and discuss that with you and, and uh, for your consideration and move forward. Has the um, public safety, have they been notified and asked for their input? I can't speak to that at this point in time. I'm certainly happy to follow up with the uh, city attorney and report back to you. That's, that's really important because, yeah, that's important. Has this been posted for public comment? I don't know that it has. Uh, maybe this that's initiates that process. Okay. That's correct. The resolution is your indication calling for that process to occur. Others? Are we clear? If we decide to move forward with the abandonment, how is that handled from that point? I mean, the road obviously stops, and then how do we reach out to the public to kind of keep them in the loop of what's... Unfortunately, a bit beyond my role, uh, the city attorney would be better to address that. Uh, but again, what this does is just sort of moves it on the process to get it to the point where, and I assume at the next uh, meeting, you'll have the opportunity to be here to address those questions you might have as they might pertain to a discussion. Thank you. It'll be advertised, it'll be posted. Um, that's the public notification or the public hearing side of that. Uh, but that will be the process. To Mr. Airwood's point, uh, that then initiates those communications with any affected utilities uh, or public safety, anyone that would be impacted by the closure of the road. Both sides of this roadway are in the city, correct? Yes. Comments? Questions? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, the second item of new business this evening is the first and final reading of resolution number 7 2019. This is a resolution to accept streets into the city. Namely, Franklin Point Subdivision Streets, Willow Bottom Drive, Buckle Burry Road, Tuckborough Street, Waymet Drive, Shireborn Lane, and Deep Hollow Place into the City of Greer Street System. Mr. Steve Grant joins us this evening. Mr. Grant, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, in your packets, you should have a picture of the site plan, an aerial view of the subdivision, and also a current picture of the streets of uh, Franklin Point. This project did start in, in 2015. It's located off Highway 101 and Snow Road. It's in Council District 3. Uh, all utilities are in, streets are paved, and most of the houses are built out. Staff has inspected the construction and believe it meets city standards, and therefore staff recommends that Willow Bottom Drive, length of 1,878 feet, Buckleberry Road, length of 3,488 feet, Tuckboro Street, length of 1,064 feet, Waymeet Drive, length of 876 feet, Shireborn Lane, length of 145 feet, and Deep Hollow Place, length of 186 feet, be accepted into the city street system for ownership and maintenance. Entertain a motion to receive. So moved. And, second. and a second. Four is open for discussion. Questions? Comments? 
Hearing none, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Aylward? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? No. Mayor Dana? Yes. Council in executive session, we have two matters to consider this evening as our uh, final business tonight. Um, I'll entertain a motion that we um, consider those matters. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to enter into executive session to discuss a personnel matter pertaining to the Public Services Department as allowed by state statute section 30-4-781. It comes as a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Aylward? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Dana? Yes. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to enter into executive session to discuss a personnel matter pertaining to the police department as allowed by state statute section 30-4-81. Council of Gums has a motion to hear a second. Sorry. I have a motion and a second. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Aylward? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Dana? Yes. Council, we extend an executive session for the two matters approved. Council, in the executive session, we considered two matters. One was a personnel matter, which was a motion to enter into executive session to discuss a personnel matter pertaining to the Public Services Department. We've taken no action in that regard. The other was a personnel matter, which was a motion to enter into executive session to discuss a personnel matter related to the Police Department. We've taken no action in that regard. Do I hear a motion to come out of executive session? Is that a motion? Second. Motion and second. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Arrowwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Ms. Albert? Yes. Mayor Downer? Yes. Stand adjourned. <laughs>